Okay, got it. Yeah, so feel free to engage the speaker, ask questions and everything to do with that. Thanks, Olivine. Take the show. Um, thank you very much, Okot. Thank you very much, Justine, for this opportunity. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining the call. Um, my name is Alvin George, and I'm so delighted to be a speaker today and having to share my insights and scrollable experiences in Flutter. Something about me, um, that I've, not, I've not much in my, in my description about me, actually, but um, I would say I've started Flutter recently. I'm about um, a month and a half in Flutter, like almost two months in Flutter, but I've, I love it so much. And I've learned a lot through the journey. And yeah. I'm here to share with you what I've learned and along the way. Right now. Yes, we, we lost you a little bit, but we are here now. All right. So I'm sharing my screen. Uh -huh. I hope it's visible. All right. Um, yeah, so we're talking about effective scrollable experiences and I'm Olvin George, your uh, speaker for today. Um, not, uh, as I said earlier, there is not matter, uh, much about me. I don't professionally work anywhere. I'm a student currently, yeah, but I am a platform developer by practice. Yeah, and I'm also, yeah, the, one other thing about me is that I am Dutch butter guy. So that name up uh, below my photo, that's also me. And that's also my Twitter handle, Alvin George, uh, Dutch butter guy. Okay. So I will start off this session by talking about scroll, scrollable experiences. Like when you hear scroll, scrollable experiences, um, what is it that you comes to your mind? And it is this thing we call it slivers the first time i heard of slivers i literally got shivers and i was like um what is that because it's daunting to a lot of people people listen people hear the word slivers then they're like Oof. i also did the same um slivers are just i just a uh, when you have flutter application when developing a flutter application you have areas in your application where you need to scroll, you need to do some activity, you need to scroll, maybe you are having a friend's list, so you're scrolling through the list. And yeah, basically that's what we're talking about today, slivers, cause you can't have scroll scrollable without slivers in place. So I will just share the slides. First of all, we will talk about, I will give the, uh, a ground up of what uh, we're about to, to, what it's about. Then after that, I will have a code sharing, we'll view a simple application of where we can implement the same. Yeah, and we can draw right now. So as I said, slivers, slivers is just any area in a, an application where it's scrollable. So like if you have an application with so with the list of let's say widgets, because um let me roll back a little bit because we have beginners in the platform. So Flutter, Flutter is a technology whereby you build applications and your applications are comprise basically of widgets. So like it's just a widget on top of the other widgets. So like when you build an application, you will have um, widgets stacked on top of each other. So they're displayed in two main ways. So it can be through a render box or a render sliver. So hence the comparison sliver versus box. Um, in a, um, to Keep things simple, uh, sliver, when you hear the word sliver, just related to the word slide. Sliver, slide, they both have the S-L-I with it. So like slay, slay. So sliver means it's slideable. It can slide, you can scroll through it. But a box, um, box is a layout whereby the application or the interface has got constrained heights and width. So like you can, you get to a, position where you will scroll yes but it has a fixed constraint meaning that you'll get a point where you can't scroll anymore 
So there is a difference between a sliver and a box. And the two, since Prata, we, we just rendered, rendered the screen using render objects. So like a sliver is rendered using the render sliver object and a box is rendered using the render box. So like that is the difference between a sliver and a box. Yeah, get me? Um, box has constraints, sliver doesn't have constraint. You can just scroll through. That is the main difference between a sliver and a box. So sliver has a variety of widgets. Like um, in fact, anything in, your, in a product application that scrolls is a sliver. Um, we, like, we can have two things, okay? Let's say how, if you have ever built an, app, an application of Flutter or when you decide to build a Flutter application, you will have a scenario where you need to have a list of objects. Maybe they'll map through horizontally or vertically. Uh, either way, at some point we'll need to scroll with it. And let's say you built it uh, using um, column because when you stack objects on top of each other, like one, two, three, four, in one column, that is a column. Um, a column is a render is a render box object, a render render box widget, meaning it has a constraint height and yeah, constraint height. So that's why more of the times, if you are the you are if you you are first starting out with Flutter, you can use a column to stack your widgets on top of each other. Then at the bottom of your screen, you'll get some error saying ren um, overflowed there by some number of pixels, maybe 10 pixels or 20 pixels, meaning that you have reached the limit. So like this app is like, yo, you gave me this fixed limit and you're giving me this list of items which is trying to pass the limit and I can't handle that. So like I'm throwing an, throwing an error or a warning rather to tell you that, please, if you want to view more of what you are, what we want to display on the screen, try and use another widget try and use something that is scrollable since I can't contain that capacity. So like that's the, the column communicating to you since it's an object, it's, it's, a, it's a render box. So like it has a fixed height. So you can't pass elements that are, um, well, how can I put it? Like are higher than like there, there are a large number of elements whereby they surpass the given height. So that is where list view comes in place. So a list view works, replaces a column in that a list view acts like a column, but uh, it has, um, it, is, it is a sliver, meaning it is scrollable, meaning you can give it, you can give a number of elements on the screen and they display, and they display. So some of the examples of uh, widgets that we, which we will look at today, Sliver up bar, sliver list, silver grid. Um, sliver up bar is just like a normal normal up bar in a flat application. Uh, the way an app is structured, the up bar comes at top of it. Like let's say it is the navigation area of your application. So like the top place, or the right at the utmost top of the application is the up bar, and so. You can you can declare you can you, they we have the we have the custom material 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 up bar which can be used and can uh, can be applied but it's just static it can't scroll since it's an it's a render box it can't scroll so sliver also provides an up bar which can slide which as you scroll through the user interface it slides it slides a bit so. That is the difference between the normal up bar and the sliver up bar. We also have the sliver list. Um, sliver list is more or less the same like a list view, but it would have with, um, with some extra features actually. Uh, it has, it, you, you can just chuck the elements on top of each other, one, two, three, um, vertically on your screen. Then a sliver grid, um, a grid, the way elements are mapped on the screen, like if you say um, maybe three elements in one row or four elements in one row, so like it's one, two, three, they're mapped on that screen that way, you use a sliver grid for that to happen. And the point of using the sliver grid means that these elements, they can be slid, they can sl you can slide through them and you can have, you can make some customizations with it. 
So before I move on to the next session, there is something I need to emphasize about. You can say, um, maybe you have a column and you say, the, you get an error that this column um, has a render, render overflow of let's say 10 pixels. Then you're like, um, instead of using a list view, why don't I use, use a single child scroll view? Yeah, a single child scroll view can work through. It's another, ob it's another element that allows scrolling through the interface. But the, the, the oof part of the sliver, sliver and single child scroll view is that it only displays or, or it only maps a single, L, single widget as a, as a, as a point. And, compared to list view, which has a, a collection of children, which maps all the children at the screen at once. So like you get some difference in how these widgets are being mapped on the screen. So like it's preferred if you have a long list of items, use a list view instead to avoid performance issues actually. Yeah. So moving on to the sliver upper, um, a normal up bar has, okay, a sliver up bar and a normal up bar, they don't have much of a difference, but we can have some, pro we get some properties in sliver up bar that are not in the normal up bar, which you look at them in the demo application. So the properties of sliver up bar, the cool properties, not the normal properties. Yeah, we have the normal properties like title, um, background color, the items, what have you. But Sliver provides some other properties which are specifically designed for the float, the scrolling effect or the sliding effect of it. So we have flexible space. We will see how what the flexible space does in action. Uh, we have the floating property. We have the pin. We have the snap. We have the expanded height. So as I said, that a Sliver allows allows one to scroll through the screen, right? So Flexible space allows you allows you to have some. It's, it gives you okay. Before you use the flexible space, um, sorry for this. Um, we have the expanded height. Expanded height gives the. It gives a height level of your up bar. Let's say you want it to be two hundred or one hundred. So like the expanded height will expand the up bar since it can scroll means it can it can expand as well. So. Once we have the expanded height, we'll have some space, definitely. And for you, in, if you want to, let's say, you don't want the space to, to remain that way because it kind of looks ugly or you want to customize it to look into a more cooler way, this is where the flexible space comes in place where you can pass by some other cool features. Like you can pass a background color, background image or something. All right. I'm Hello. We lost all of Oh. We did lose you for a while, Apostle. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I think the internet was not stable. Anyway. I'll just I'll just iterate where I was. I didn't say much, actually. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just a minute. Right. So I was talking about um, I was talking about how we can use slivers in our application. Something like um, the sliver up bar. I think that was where I got lost. Or of course. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, yeah. So Sliver Up Bar has some properties which we have, which are not like, they're not, uh, they're not being given by the normal Up Bar. 
So these extra properties like flexible space, floating, pin, snap, and expanded height, there are some of these properties that come in place since this up by can be slid, like it can slide, it can scroll through. These properties are there to, to implement those features. So given the, the, the first property I'll talk about is the expanded height property. Expanded height gives um, specific height to the up bar. Like you want your up bar on top to have this particular height, like 100 or 200 or 300 or 400. Yeah. So once you give that up there, that particular height, you will have a space over there. And more of times it will be an empty space. So you will like, you want to add something on that since it does, it looks dull or you want to implement some image or some background color to it. So that is where flexible space, space comes in place. With flexible space, you can pass through a flexible space um, widget where it allows you to pass in properties like, let's say if you want to add a background color, you want to back, add a background image to it. So floating, floating is a property whereby it allows your upper, if it can either stay on top, you can, it floats on top of your, of your, of your UI. So like it takes uh, two Boolean, it's either true or false. So like your, your up bar either floats or doesn't float. Pinned, pinned is just like it's pinned on the wall. So like once it's there, it's just there. You can't, you can't, as you scroll, the elements will flow beneath it. But floating, while you scroll the elements, so the difference between floating and pinned is that in floating, as you scroll, the up bar disappears with the elements as you go through it. But with pinned, as you scroll through, the up bar stays put and the elements slide beneath the up bar. Hope it makes sense. Then snap. Snap is just some cool feature which um, when you are when you're scrolling through the elements, then your up bar like it collapses or expands, it gives a cool snap feature like it snaps through it. So those are the cool properties that sliver up bar has, right? Um, currently, is anyone with a question? I'm taking questions for that before I continue. Any question, clarification? Yeah, kindly feel free to unmute if you have a question. Hi, I have a question. Yeah. Um, so interesting so far to learn about that. I heard you mention about the single child scroll view and the list view. Yeah. In a case where you'd love to use the single child scroll view um, in place of a list view. So what's the most appropriate approach to use? Do you consider using levers? instead of single child scroll view or what exactly do you recommend all right um when given that like let's say i have a list like a list of elements it's a long list and i want to let's say map them on the screen so either using either like either single child or, or a list view i will go for a list view since a list view, single child scroll view maps, it maps a single widget at a time. So like it will display, yes, but regarding to how they, they will be mapped on the screen, like it will be one widget at a time. One, it's like the render, yeah, rendered actually, yes. It will render one widget at a time. So like I will prefer list view since list view list renders all the elements of the screen at once. Make sense? Um, what if you place this the list view as a child of uh, the single child scroll view? Oh, you can, but why? Like they perform the same thing. Well, personally, okay. In my opinion, I I would. I don't know. Maybe maybe others have other opinions, but I will just. I will place a, sing, a single list view, but I wouldn't use both if I were me. Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, that's something that really uh, always gets me to thinking, but uh, why I was asking is I wanted to know your thought process and I'd really love to know 
uh, either other recommendations and things like that. But yeah, so interesting. Okay, nice. Um, any other question before I move on? Okay. If there is none, I'll move on there. Now, um, as I was mentioning the types of uh, sliver widgets that are available, I said something sliver list, yeah? So sliver list acts like a list view. It, acts, it maps a long list of elements on the screen and allows you to scroll through them, right? So sliver list, um, under sliver list we have we can define sliver lists with either in two ways. You can either use a sliver list as it is right there, but you can you can also use a sliver fixed and accent list. But we have a difference between the two. A sliver list um, it doesn't give any fixed extent of the element that are being mapped. So, like you can say, I want to map only like let's say twenty or thirty or forty or fifty elements on my screen. Mm -hmm. That will be that will be a sliver fixed extent list, meaning that you want to say that I want this list this this list to extend to a particular extent. So like if you give anything more, it won't display or it will throw an error to you. But a sliver list doesn't have any 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 assumptions to the extent that you want to put it. So like it just renders within their constraint, just like that. So like there isn't. There isn't there is there is no there are no constraint boundaries in a sliver list, but they are in, in a sliver fixed extent list. That is the difference between the two. But for the demo application today, we'll be using a sliver list. I will just explain why. Oh, okay, I can you just do that right now? Or well, let's say, given an instance that you are fetching data from an API, and this data, like it's it is a, it's it's a list, and you don't know. This list, like you don't know how many items are being held. Like it is a dynamic fetching. Like you don't know how many items we will, will get back. So for that, you will use a sliver list since it doesn't provide any constraint to you. So like the items will be mapped freely and easily. So I, when you scroll, just be scrolling uh, smoothly with no effect. But if you have a fixed number of items that you you are sure about that this is the only items I have, nothing added, nothing removed to it. Now then you will use a sliver fixed extent list. Hope that makes sense. Now, um, the sliver list, sliver list uh, takes, um, you know, it's, I don't know if it's a parameter or a property. Anyway, sliver list takes a delegate called sliver child delegate, which provides the children. So like, Let's say you give you are using a list view, and list view want to like a list view comes with uh, children. So like you want these children to be mapped on the screen. With a sliver list, you will have a delegate. Then that delegate will pass some parameters to it, which will render the widgets on the screen. So a sliver child builder delegate, it it is a it is an it is a type of this child delegate. And if you use um, if you've used list view builder, so this is like um, I would say cousin or sister or brother, they're related. So like this is the relative comparison to the list view builder in the list view. So you use a sliver child builder to list um, items if you don't want to use the list view builder. So and finally, uh, according to this, not finally according to the whole session. The delegate check takes a child count parameter in which is similar to the list view. So like when you use a list view builder, you will have this item kind, uh, item count. So like item, item count shows the number of elements that you want to render or number of elements that you want to be displayed on your interface. So in a list view, you will use item count following this particular count, but in a sliver, be in a in a sliver list like this child count par we have this child count parameters where you pass in the value right so yeah any question regarding to the sliver list 
Any question regarding to the sliver lists? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Now let's dive into some code, shall we? Right. So with me, I have um, I have some, I have some code over here. I don't know if it's visible. On on my left. Then on my right, I I have the output of what I'm trying to show. Oh, by the way, this code is in GitHub. I just I can pass the repository um, in the chat. Yes. Oh. Okay, is, is it visible? Yeah, I, I can see your GitHub account at the moment. I don't know what this meant. Um no, okay. Let me just let me just paste this um so that you can get it over there. Okay. Just a moment. All right. So if you like if you like to access the code that you'll be using the I've pasted the repository the chat, chat section, you can have a look at it. Um the only file we'll be handling is the main dot that file. Uh please ignore the other files. So Now this is the, the this is the 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 card. I hope it's visible. Yeah, it's visible. Okay. Now, so this is uh basically this is just a simple, very very simple application, which we start with the any app any application any plot application uh, will. We, we, it's compiled and run to, through the main file. So like, that's why we have this void main over here, cons my app, run up. So like this run up uh, spins up, this is my app over here and compiles everything that is in there. So like my app is over here, it's a stateless widget, which which has, which defines the material application, which returns the material application, which has this homepage widget over here. So like homepage has been defined over here as a stateful widget. So I think stateless and stateful widgets will be talked about in another session because it's a whole story on its own. But we are talking about slivers today and sliding effects today. So this is what I was talking about. So if you would like to, let's say, build your application with a normal app, so like this scaffold provides a lot of properties for that. So in the scaffold, you can have, we have this app bar property, app bar, where you can define a normal app bar and it gets rendered, something like that. But there is a, there is a gotcha over there. Scaffold is not a slideable, it, it, it isn't, it isn't, it isn't a render sliver, it's a render box. So like you cannot pass anything that slides through it. So like if you wanted, let's say to define sliver up bar over here, like let's say like up bar, sliver up bar, it won't work. It won't work since this scaffold, it's a, it's a, uh, let me just, yeah. Scaffold is a render box, but sliver, it's a render sliver, so it, it like it needs to be scrolled. So that's why you see this red thing over here saying, um, okay, well, I can see the warning, but it's, it, it, it is complaining because it's kind of telling you, please put this upper in a place that can be scrolled. That is why slivers are mostly defined 
in a cast from scroll, scroll view, a widget. That's why in the body over here, body of the scaffold, we have this custom scroll view, which takes slivers. Um, no, normally we'll like, let's say if you use let's, something like column or list view, the parameter that will pass through, it will be children. But we, using the custom scroll view, we'll use slivers, which will take a number of slivers together and map the slivers on the screen. Hope that makes sense. Let me just try and... Okay, currently is my, only the code is visible, right? Like you can't see the other window of the output, of course, is it visible? Yeah, unfortunately not. We can only, at the moment for me, I don't know whether the others are, um, but for me, I'm just seeing the code. I don't know if it's visible from the other people's end though. Okay. Maureen, can you, can you, can you, can you verify that? I think it stopped share the screen, but I was seeing the code, um, the code, only the code. Okay. Hmm. Is there a way in Zoom where you can view both at the same time, like share the entire screen window? Yeah, you can share the entire screen, but you can always, um... So I don't know, maybe there's somebody with a better device, but um, you can always minimize the screen to see them both at the same time, or maybe you can always interchange. So you can split the screen or interchange them. But for you to do that, you can you must share the entire screen though. I mean, not the entire screen, but the, the entire, um, because Zoom always gives you an option of sharing either single application or everything in your computer, right? Okay. So you can always interchange by pressing maybe, control tab, I don't know, something like that, or maybe splitting the screen into two so that you share the code in this side and then the application on there or whatever you're using yeah. to share the application on the other side. Yeah, I'm but with do... that also, with, with that do that, people people with knowledge in Zoom, I'm not a Zoom expert though. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm trying to do that, the only option I'm seeing, like I can only select one window. So. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, what are you using? What browser? Are you using Zoom via Zoom or Zoom via browser? Zoom via client, Zoom, Zoom client application. Ah, okay. Then I think uh, you can always uh, interchange. So just share, share your code and when you want to share another thing, you can stop sharing, then share it. We understand. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now this is the the output of the application. I'm running it via Chrome. That's why it looks like that. But if you can also run it on your phone, and it looks as just fine. So this application, the yellow the yellow thingy, the one that is written all all is scroll on it, is an app bar. It's a sliver app bar that I've that I have used. So, so like, yeah, let me just give the preview of what this application is. Then I go to the code and explain, then you'll try to relate. So we have this yellow thingy, mm, not yellow, I'm colorblind, it's amber. This amber thingy, um, which with only scroll on it, it's uh, the first sliver up bar. I will explain why I used two, because this other one, red scrolly, it's another sliver up bar. Then this item zero, item one, item two, item three, item four, they're just elements that I've mapped on it. Like I just gave a count of this number of elements and show them on the screen. Right. Um, I hope that made sense. I hope. So I, I would like you to view something, first of all, if I jump into the code. As I scroll through this UI like this, you will see that the red scrolly disappears, but the only scroll stays on top. So that is what I was talking about, the fixed and the fixed and not fixed, like fixed, true or, true or false. So like the first one, uh, only scroll has been pinned. Pinned is another 
property that Sliver Upper has. So it has been pinned. That's why as you scroll, this, these items, they move at the back of it. And this, but Scrolly, Scrolly has not been pinned. So like I put pinned false in that, as you scroll, it goes away. It goes with the items. Yep. Um, hmm. Another difference between Oli Scroll and Scrolly is that Oli Scroll has some, uh, have some space in it, but Scrolly doesn't have a space in it. It just looks like a regular upper. So the reason for this is that Oli Scroll, I put I expanded height. So like I defined a particular height for it. So like 250 is the height for this upper, but in Scrolly, I didn't put any height just to so that you can view the difference between them. So let me share the code right now and see. Yeah. So under in, inside this in the inside inside this slivers list, the first one sliver up bar, expanded height to fifty. That was all you scroll. Center title. Okay, center title is just another property which centers the type their text. Uh, in, on, on on your it will work on your device, but for some reason on the browser it, it refused. So, um, this background color colors at amber was the color of uh, of all scroll pinned. Uh, pinned is true, so that's why when I scroll, it stays stuck on top of it, but the items flow beneath it. So because of this pinned true value over there. Then flexible space. Flexible space, space um, basically just says, you put some expanded height of 200. And yeah, we have done that. We have given you this height, 250 of color ember. But would you like to put something in it? So that's where flexible space comes in place. So like flexible space, takes flexible space bar as we will pass through the flexible space bar, which passes through items that you want, like to put in that space. You can put a title, which I put the text all is scroll. Yeah, you can have an you can have an image background with an image in that space. Oh, so this is where the the, the difference comes comes in plus. You can put the background color outside flexible space. Like background color will work, but you cannot use background image over here. You can, you can only use background image inside the flexible space, and that is something that you cannot you cannot also use in the normal 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 app bar. You can't put a background image since a background image expands. So like you need to put it in some place where it will be flexible enough to expand. So that's why you put anything that you want to replace in that space. In this flexible space property over there, so that is about all this. Uh, the second one was the red one, scrolly. Scrolly defined background color is red. Pinned false. That's why as you scroll through, it moves the other elements. Floating true. Um, the same as you. Oh, pinned false. It, it, I haven't pinned it. So like when you scroll, it scrolls with the other elements. Floating true. Yeah, same effect. As you scroll. It'll scroll the other elements. Snap, true. Snap is used, um, as you scroll down, I don't know if you noticed, while I was scrolling, there is some snap effect that's scrolly shown that only scroll didn't have. Um, that is about the app buzz. Any question for now? Any question? Clarification? Who's confused? Kindly feel free to unmute if you have a question, or maybe you can always put in the chat. Okay. <clears throat> um, let me just show, I figured the snap effect didn't wasn't visible enough. Anyway, 
One more time, this is the demo of the application we're talking about. So as I scroll through, the red scrolling goes away, but all scroll stays. As I scroll back, we have some, some snap effect as scrolling goes. If you're keen, you can, you can, you can view it. Okay, that, 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 that is it about the app buzz. Now we move to these items as they are rendered here. We have item zero to item, I don't know, which limit did I give? I, I gave it a thousand items. So like they scroll down. Okay. Um, this is a sliver list. I use a sliver list over here. And in that I, I put, I put, um, I put, I put, I didn't want to put an extent to it. So I just put a sliver list just at it, as it is right, just like that. So that the items could um, easily, I don't know, flow on the screen. But yeah, so that's, that, that is implemented by the delegate. Delegate passes all the children to the screen. So let us move to the code and see what I mean by that. Okay. Now we have this sliver list. Yeah. Sliver list takes a delegate. Delegate um, is the sliver child builder delegate. I say the child builder delegate acts like the list view builder. If you're using a list view or you've used a list view before, it works more or less the same. So like I'm a list, a list, a list view builder, it will it takes some item count which here we'll take the child count replace. So like those are just some of the differences between the, the child builder and the list view builder. Both of them, they take the context and the index since you need to map the elements regarding the index on the screen. And that is the context is how what renders on the screen. So like I used a card, just a simple card which has a color on it. So like, the card has a color of blue, but as it maps on it operates, it gets to a particular index. So like the, the, the colors interchange according to the index at which they are at. And the text shows the particular item at a particular index. This index has been passed on top here with int index. So like it takes the index of a particular element and it be, it's being mapped on top of it. And the child count is a wow, thousand over here. If I put 2000, it will render 2000 elements on the screen. I hope that makes sense. Something, something else to add on it. If you have, if you don't know the particular number of elements you want to map to it, let's say you're fetching a game from an API, you will have to use the dot length property to add the child count. You will pass dot length to show this particular number of items to be rendered on the screen. Any question? Hello, I have a question. Yeah. So according to the properties that I've seen on the sliver list, so yeah. what does it make it different from the one from list view dot builder? Okay, as far as the properties that I've mentioned, like I've stated over there, is the we don't they, they there isn't much of a difference according to the demo application over there. But if you use it like um, there are some other very like other what how would I put it? Instead of using a list view builder, like if you use a sliver list, and there's some properties like sliver padding, like specifically sliver properties, like some, I don't know, honestly, I don't know if sliver provides much like other features compared to the list view, but there are some, I think there is a, some slight of a difference regarding to the additional properties that haven't been started. But unless I'm wrong about it. Yeah, that's yeah, that's okay. 
So can I make this assumption? So according to the uh, the flow tree trees, I can see you have utilized the custom scroll view. So yeah. and according to custom scroll view, it only accepts slivers. And so in a case where I want to utilize uh, maybe the cool up bar, which will be a sliver up bar. So I should, I have to suggest looking onto the sliver list instead of the list view that we build. That's my assumption. Is that correct? Um, the last part of the of the question, like just iterate on it a bit. The last part of it. So, like, let's say just to be clear on that point is that yeah, I have like maybe in a scenario is a thought process. So mm -hmm. I don't want to use the normal app bar. Like there are yeah. some things that like customization, like the cool properties that you have say are mm -hmm. being provided by the sleep up bar. So yeah. in a case where I am utilizing a sleep up bar, I cannot utilize the normal widgets because they are using render object and so I have to fix my mind to which the silver and in your proper the render sliver and then under that so I should have to consider the widgets where it belong to a sliver instead of the ones which belong to a render box. Okay, this is what I was maybe you can use you can use it. Um if you want to use a box element inside of slivers we you need to wrap it inside the, um we have this i don't know if it's a property or a method it's called sliver to box adapter so like let me just type it so like sliver to box adapter allows you to use um you you're you're wrapping a box element inside a sliver so like it allows you to map a box element while using a sliver while inside a sliver tree, something like that. Make, have I answered the question? Yeah, yeah, it is clear now, thanks. Okay. Any other question? Um, well, yeah, right, so like, just before, Okay, yeah, so, something to add on what Eno just said. You can, yeah, if you, like, let's say you have a separate widgets and some piece of a widget, you are having a box widget, but in your tree, your main method, you have slivers. You can use it. You can use slivers, but you have to wrap it inside the slivers to sliver to box adapter, meaning you're converting this box to a sliver. So like it will be rendered on the screen, but if you can't, but if you don't at that particular time, I think you will be thrown at some warnings and some errors. Yeah. And yeah, basically that's it guys. Um, that is the end of my presentation. That's all I had. Um, simple, short, and I hope I was precise. Thank you very much, uh, Okoth and Jospin for the opportunity. Nice. And really learned a lot from it. Maureen, you're muted if you're speaking, sorry. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I was asking if we have any other questions or comments, feedback in regards to his presentation. Um, personally, I really enjoyed uh, the talk, trying to uh, show us how the code works and the example of the demo. So I can easily relate, even if I were a beginner. and. So yeah, I was asking if anyone else has a feedback, comment, question, or if you'd like to present like him next time. The floor is yours to speak. I have a question. Yes, go on, go on. So yeah, to Olvin, so are there any performance that will be indicated determining with 
whether you use a, a render box or a render silver. Um, on to be honest, I'm not quite sure, but I think I think they will be on my opinion. Maybe somebody else will emphasize that, but in my opinion, I, I think I'm not quite sure to if there'll be a form of performance issues or not. Okay, thanks. I don't know if there are more questions. They're always welcomed. And we can always take it offline if, if it's possible. And um, yeah, we usually have these sessions monthly, especially at the end of the, the last Saturday of the, of the month. And uh, you, are always, you are always welcomed. And thank you very much, Oli, for the presentation. Uh, I was trying to follow you follow the presentation, though also like Maureen, I'm also a beginner, flatter, and hopefully yeah, maybe I'll catch up someday. Uh, with regards to the resources, uh, we'll share the, the recording uh, and the, I mean the slides and then the GitHub link uh, in, in, a, in a few days time. And also feel free if you if you have a question, you can always, I mean, I mean with regards to the community, the Flutter Kisumu community, you can always reach out to me or Maureen. So uh, we are both of both of us are on Twitter and um, yeah, so you can always reach out there. Yeah, so I think I'll stop the recording and uh, if there's any off the record question or something somebody have, you feel free to